<laughs> hey, Mark Scott reporting. It's cold in New York. <laughs> ah, it's actually very nice. It's 50 degrees. Maybe 48 degrees, New York City. Breezy stuff. So I want to do a... Um, I want to do a little talk about the... Uh, the QAnon killer, Anthony Camillo. Uh, I was in court the other day and... Uh, Usually takes about a day to to sleep on it, two days. That's how my brain works. And I heard the evidence. I heard the evidence in that courtroom, and I want to talk about it. So, shout outs to uh, Ken Cal uh, Calfi and um, Another World is Possible. You guys, uh, your comments are very interesting, and I want to talk about. I want to talk about your comments and what's going on. This might be a little clumsy because it's like I said, it's cold out. And uh, it's windy too. So, so Anthony Camillo, the what I have been calling the QAnon killer for so long, Marcus Conti reported, for so long calling him the QAnon killer that Q, 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 he was down the rabbit hole of Q. Anthony Camillo was, and it drove him. To kill the Gambino crime boss. I said that. Right? That's what I said all along. Right? Well, I didn't say it. He said it. He said it with the cue on his hand. You remember? You remember in court he showed us all the cue? Right? And that's where we got it from, right? I didn't say that. What I said was that he was down some kind of rabbit hole. That's for sure. And he had some kind of grifters. He was surrounded by those grifters. And we know who those grifters are because I have credible evidence now that you grifters are actually watching my little program. Why? Because I have the scoop on the story. I was in the courtroom and I saw what I saw. Ah. So hello grifters. If you've been trying to attack me, you know what happens. You get your, your accounts blocked. So we have all your sock accounts all accounted for now. They're all accounted for in a nice little in a nice little pile. So if you decide to continue to insult this reporter, if you want to give me the information, that's fine. You have my email address. And you could certainly be a human being and not attack me and insult me and uh, try to bring me down to your level. <laughs> that shit ain't gonna work. Uh, as you see. So so let's let's talk about uh, a man drives his white pickup truck, his silver pickup truck. Anthony Camillo, he he drives his his car, his his white pickup truck to the front of a guy's house. And the first story is he says, "I was just I stopped to smoke some pot on the block, and and I got too high, and I thought the car was in drive, but it was in reverse." And I backed into the, I backed into a car. I backed into some guy's Mercedes. I don't know who he is. I, I backed into some Mercedes Benz, right? So, so I just knocked on the door, and I, I you know, I, I, I figured it was the guy inside, right? So I knocked on the door. I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is, right? Because I knocked his license plates off. I just wanted to say I was sorry. Give him his license plate back. That's story number one. Right? And then the guy started mouthing off to me. You know who the fuck I am? You know who I am? I should kill you right now, motherfucker. You know who the fuck who I am? I should have you killed right now, motherfucker. Are you high? Are you high? That's the Gambino guy saying that shit to... And then, and then Camillo pulls out a gun and shoots him because he's think, he thinks he's going to be shot first. No sign of any gun, no sign of any violence, just a lot of, just a, a lot of violent threat, threatening talk, but no actual violence, and he shoots the guy. Nine times, unloads the gun on him. I, how many times did you shoot him? I don't know, I just, I don't know. The adrenaline was pumping and I shot him. Right, so that's all confirmed. See, we have our killer. We have our actual killer that right? 
Will someone tell me why I do the things that I don't want to do When you're around me I'm somebody else Ah, oh, what a clue What a clue So, a 24-year-old guy, right? Camillo, he's the throwaway. He is the throwaway gun. He's 24 years old. Blue collar, high school education. Camillo's the victim. Is a victim. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's a victim. <laughs> it's a lady jogging. I missed him. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I just got the chills. I'm like, oh, who the fuck is behind me? God damn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking about a murder. Talking about a murder hit. And I got just fucking, just got fucking, I almost got jumped from behind. But not really. Beautiful dogs out today. See the dogs? Dogs run free in the park in the, uh, in the early mornings in New York before 10 a.m. A dog can run without a leash. After 10 a.m., they have to be on a leash. So, ex-junkie, pothead, HIV, no girlfriend. Was he fearful that people thought he was gay because he had HIV? That's what he said in the. Re that's what he said in the recorded deposition. They blackmailed me. So, story number one is the story of a guy, a young boy, a young man who smokes pot in front of somebody's house. He doesn't know who he is, and he bangs into the guy's car, and, and, and it's, it's all a mistake. And then the guy threatens him, he gets nervous, and he shoots him with a 9 millimeter. I don't know who he is. I don't know no mafias. Right? That's story number one. But story number two is, I was blackmailed. See, he's not crazy. Camillo is not crazy. We know that. He's, a, he's, a, he's not a drug addict either. And he's not strung out on any medications. Why did he throw up? Whoa. Why did he throw up? Because, because he just confessed to a murder. He's nervous. Nerves will do that to you. Fucking nerves will make you throw up, right? That's why he threw up in the, in the um, interrogation video. He's nervous. And then he changed his story. Right? Then he changed his story, right? There's a vigilante killer. Who put him up to it, right? Who put him up to it, right? I, he said, I was blackmailed. I'm not ratting anybody, so it doesn't matter, he told the cop. I'm not ratting anybody, so it doesn't matter. They said you have to take care of this. That's what he said. They said, they said you have to take care of this. They texted him. They texted me. They said you have to take care of this. Take care of what? Take care of what? And who? Who really killed Frankie Cali? That's the, that's the question, right? Who killed the guy, right? It's my notebook. Oh, man. So... So the rabbit hole, man, is it real? Nobody in my family is in the, is in the, in the mafia. <laughs> uh, nobody sent me. Nobody, I swear to God, nobody sent me, he said. And then he said they blackmailed me. I swear to God, nobody sent me. I'm just thinking out loud because... I'm going to crack this shit. I'm going to get you guys, man. I'm going to get you before you get me. Ha, 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 Someone tell me why. I do the things that I don't want to do. When you're around me, I'm somebody else. Why does a guy do it? Why did he do it? I've been telling you all along, man. It's a fucking rabbit hole. Right? People, I had a conversation with a friend the other day. Maybe he's watching, right? 
I'm walking to the post office, and you know, and he, he we, I'm telling him, he said, "Hey, you making videos?" I said, "Yeah, I'm making videos." I said, "I was at the courthouse yesterday, uh, checking out the, uh, you know, the Frankie Cali murder. Anthony Camillo shot the Gambino guy." And I told him, I said, "I said he definitely shot the guy, but," and I was telling him about the world of LARPers, the world of online influencers that try to influence the influencers and also try to influence uh, uh, vulnerable people for lack of a better term people that were would be receptive to to do the things that I don't want to do right those kind of people The grifters that 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 rally people together. Now, I was trying to explain to him just how persistent and how many they are in numbers, and he was he was uh, amazed by what I was telling him because it usually doesn't happen to people. You're not usually the target of it unless you're reporting on it, unless you're an influencer, or you're someone who they're trying to influence. To get them to do the things they don't want to do. Right? Through blackmail, through... I don't know if blackmail is the right word, but... Fear tactics. Does it work? You bet your ass it works. You bet your ass it works, right? I mean, I, I was... I Look at my LARPing videos. I, I've pretty much documented the whole experience of being... Uh, um... Uh, preyed on for whatever reason. I mean, I, I take it as flattery. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm influential. Okay. You want to come at me? All right. Well, you better have your best gun out because <laughs> this shit ain't going to be easy. Right? And I was explaining to him the feeling of being uh, uh, persecuted, pursued relentlessly, day and night, and convinced trying to be convinced that you're nobody and nothing and we're the powerful ones. We're connected to the FBI and the CIA and the NSA. They're the deep state, motherfucker. And you better do what we tell you to do or we're going to get you. Excuse me. I, I was telling him that. It's like, nah, man, it's that, it's that thick and that intense. I was like, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I have... I don't know, 50, 60 hit videos and, 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 you know, a couple of hundred emails and, you know, and 10 email chains of threats and attacks and, I mean, I can prove it honestly. And then I told him about another character who I won't mention, but you might know who it is, who confide in one of the grifters one day on a video and said, I just wanted to stop. I I I want to I want to I want I want it to stop, and I'm willing to stop talking about it. If you stop attacking me, and that's a smart guy. That's a real smart guy that I view as a very smart guy, integral guy. Saying that was at the end of his rope because he didn't he couldn't stop the attack. He couldn't stop the grifters from. He couldn't get the grifter's hand out of his pocket. And and he he was willing to negotiate with the terrorists. Now, I fundamentally disagree. You don't negotiate with terrorists. You give them you you lure them in, you bring them as close as you possibly can, and then you wind up with all your fucking might and you kick their balls, kick them square in the balls and hope their balls fly out of their mouth. That's how you deal with grifters. <laughs> <That's, laughs> Alright, so that's how you deal with grifters. You don't fucking, you don't negotiate with terrorists. You kick them in the cunt where they, where, where they, where it belongs, right? You put your foot right up their fucking ball sack. Excuse me, I didn't want to curse today. <laughs> so. So I told my friend standing there in front of the post office that 
that the 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 power of the grifter and the the that they're very good at what they do and there's a lot of them they come in numbers maybe 10 12 of them at once with a, a series of other you know sock accounts so you don't really know how many they are in numbers and you have to knock out all their socks to quiet them down so that's the reason why the chat the comments down below have been a little milder because I've been knocking them out the people that just come on to insult but what does this have to do with Anthony Camillo's murder it has everything to do with it because whoever put him up to it whether it was direct or indirect whatever the motive was it was not coincidental that he shot and killed the Gambino crime boss one of the most you know powerful criminal enterprises in America he kills the boss of the guy and he knows he knew full well that he would be hunted for the rest of his life now was he was he offered a promise <laughs> Q was he given a promise that that Donald Trump is going to drain the swamp I would, Donald Trump is going to come in and save me because because I got the guy that was going to you know I got him I got the guy they told me to get I had to do the thing and I got him <coughs> and Trump is going to save me Trump is going to drain the swamp and 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 after he drains the swamp he's going to come get me out of jail because I killed the guy he's going to pardon me is that ridiculous to say that not really when you consider that Q was telling people that that Obama and and Bush are already in and Hillary Clinton are already in Guantanamo uh, Guantanamo Bay prison <laughs> and that there's pedophile uh, colonies child pedophile colonies on Mars uh, it's not unrealistic to think uh, something as simple as that that if he killed the guy now someone would do him a favor later did he think he was going to spend the rest of his life in, in prison uh, or maybe he figured and this is a maybe I don't know the statistics of it but maybe he just he just contracted HIV he figured you know what I'm gonna die anyway man I, you know what I don't want to live with HIV I'm embarrassed I right? maybe he didn't understand that you can live you can live to your 70s and 80s you can live your whole life with HIV it's not a big deal anymore All right? it's not it's not AIDS right it's not the advanced stages of a disease they've got it under control now right? in fact either the, the either the HIV virus mutated and is no longer deadly to humans or it was the medications in the beginning in the 80s that was killing everybody or a combination of both but nonetheless maybe he thought that his HIV was a death sentence and that because of that he became very vulnerable to the idea of being a vigilante of doing something great with his life that would be short you see he was a prime a prime candidate for the hit 24 drug drug history HIV maybe he was gay maybe he was embarrassed that he was gay he said I banged the hooker once I banged the hooker he said Right, I banged the I, I banged the hooker and I got HIV. So Camillo, that's why it has everything to do with the grifter crowd, the LARP, LARPers, in whatever form they are, is very important to the story. Folks watching from afar, law enforcement, legal teams. That's what I've been trying to tell you all along. Now, 
I look like some, some guy out in the park, but I know what I'm talking about in this little area of life. Right? As I said, I was, I was victimized by it myself just by reporting on it and, and witnessed the attack firsthand. All well documented. Hiding nothing. Right? So, Anthony Camillo, in my summation, is a victim of an online LARP of some sort where he, whether it was QAnon or not, I don't know. He's going to tell us in that court, though, I think. We're going to find out. And if you already know it and you're watching this, tell me and I'll, I'll broadcast it. There is no off the record, though, just for the record. For the record, there is no off the record. If you send me the info, I'll be out in the park talking about it. But, and make it credible. Don't waste my time. I know the difference. <laughs> I mean, guys, man, you send some bullshit, man. Right? Fucking, you think I'm fucking stupid, man. You think I'm fucking stupid. You know what pisses me off about New York? Every time I pass this spot, it pisses me off. Like, you see all these trucks in the fucking park, right? And, and they're, they're all cleanup teams. And look at how fucking dirty this is. What a disgrace. Uh, I mean, it's it's a disgrace that people do it. They chuck their garbage off the fucking highway or whatever they're doing. Right? But it's a, it's more disgraceful that nobody cleans it up. That, that we pay the park people to do this. And they don't clean it up. Right? So, I don't think I'm done yet, right? <laughs> Long form, right? I was watching Joe Rogan interview... Uh, Ed Norton last night. What a great interview. Ed Norton, one of my favorite actors. I, mean, I love that guy in Rounders. He was in... Uh, what else was he in? Uh, Fight Club. <laughs> Fight Club with fucking Brad Pitt. Man, what the fucking killing? Motherfuckers, he's badass. Right? So he's got a new movie out, Ed Norton. And um, I don't know why I'm talking about Ed Norton, but... But anyway, it made me, it made me realize that just to wrap it up, that Anthony Camillo is the victim of an online conspiracy of some sort. And that whoever controls that conspiracy had a clear target. Right? And that, that was the, the Gambino guy. Now, was it a mob hit? Was it the mob itself? Who, because it does make sense that if you want to kill a mob boss, get some grifter and, and and get them to get the, the guy, the patsy, for lack of a better term. That's really what Camillo is. Camillo's the patsy. Get the patsy to... Get the grifters to convince the patsy to do it. With the hope that someday... They'll come in and get him. They'll free him. Right? And that, that, that patsy has no ties to organized crime. There's no attachment. He's just some crazy guy. Make up a story. Say, oh yeah, he wanted to date my he wanted to date the Gambino guy's niece. Which that story turns out to be total bullshit. There is no that that story was either leaked by the police or leaked by somebody. But that there is no according to the, the, the video that I saw, he didn't he had no connection whatsoever to no niece. That's bullshit. So, if the Gambinos wanted, if one of the gangsters, I'm not going to name their names, but if, if one of those gangsters wanted Camillo dead for some reason, and, hey, listen, the mob's pretty savvy these days, and they used, they, they used what everybody else is using, right? Use what everybody else is using, which is the online, the online conspiracy uh, stuff, right? Guy just looked at me like I was a fucking insane person. <laughs> I'm not crazy, man. Fuck you, man. You're crazy. Me, I'm not crazy. Why? Because I'm out here talking to myself in the fucking park? <clears throat> I'm doing very important work right now. This work is very important. <laughs> you gotta love what you do, man, right? You gotta love what you do. Right? It's crazy shit, man. Dealing with murder. Murder victims, right? Remember Jenny Moore? Remember Jenny Moore? 
Oh, that's what I was talking about with Joe Rogan. He said that Joe Rogan said people are getting used to long form. That they will listen for 25, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. So I'm not afraid anymore to do my long videos, right? Fuck this two minutes, ten minutes, three minute news shit. Fuck that shit, man. I'm leaving all that shit behind, man. <coughs> I'm going long form. <laughs> I love early mornings too, man. That. It is a shame. I mean, the people that say that that uh, Frankie Cali, he was an organized criminal, some guinea wop from Staten Island, who, who who chose a life of crime and died died by the gun, and it doesn't really matter. And I would I would agree with that to some degree. But what what I won't what I don't agree with is how Camillo was drafted to do it. How he was convinced. He was not worth he did not do it alone. He did not he did the shooting alone, but he did not mastermind the thing alone. He was put in a position where he felt compromised and fearful that somehow his reputation, maybe his family didn't know he had HIV. Maybe his family didn't know he was gay and that was the con that was the thing that they were gonna hang over his head. If you don't do what we ask him to do. Something as simple as that can, can be highly effective on somebody susceptible to that kind of, um, that, that sort of mind control, right? That sort of psyop. To do the things that I don't want to do when you're around me. I'm somebody else. Marcus Conti reporting.